Morning dudes and dudettes. Yep, I'm behind the camera. You don't need to see my ugly mug. Um, going to give this an upgrade. So I'm swapping out the injectors from the old single hole to a allegedly upgraded four hole type. Um, Bosch new ones that have been, well, reconditioned ones anyway. I'm not going to just sit here and record every last detail. Basically, it starts here. So I've got to take the mass sensor off, the hose off, disconnect those. Then I'm going to take the plenum off, which is six Allen screws. So that's the plenum there. So I'm going to take that off and then you take that off, lift that off, give a bit of a tap with a rubber mallet. It's just perma sealed. It's nothing major. And this is the fuel rail here and obviously injectors down there. So I'll get all that off. Um, that way we've got a bit of easier access. First thing I've got to do is depressurize the system. So I'll just find a union somewhere in the fuel system. Uh, actually, there's a thing there, look. There's a thing right there. So I'm just gonna depressurize the system because I've just fired it up to bring it down here. So uh, I'll do all that and I'll come back to the process of getting all this stuff off. Sorry, I'm leaning across the motor. That's why I'm talking weird. Uh, is you've got to get the um, throttle cable and the cruise control cable off and if you've not done this before, it's basically this simple. There's a little tiny, uh, where is it? That tiny pin there, like that. And then there's a actual locating pin, which looks like that. And it's that simple. And then you've just got to, oh, hang on, I'll show you that again. Oh, it's good morning this morning. Uh, it literally is just that simple and it's exactly the same for the cruise control cable so we'll do that anyway i'll be back well that's interesting so um just put a bit of a pause to the time lapse because that Definitely not meant to look like that. Yeah, it's meant to sit down in there somehow. And I can see, God, look at the state of that. So, um, oh, it will go down, but it's popping up. So I need to find out, actually, they're all a bit loose. Oh, that's not good. They're not meant to be loose. They're meant to be really tight. And they're actually, yeah, see, even that one was up. So I'm gonna to have to do a bit of resealing and reseating, apparently Loctite or something like that. Um, just put on the base. So the ones that are loose, I'll fix. Um, yeah, anyway, while I'm on the subject. So that's the top piece. It's over there because there's a pipe on it that's a real pain I will get to. Actually, that little pipe there, that's a nuisance to get to. I'll try and work around it, but anyway. Um, so I'm gonna try and get that pipe off so I can get rid of that, move it out of the way. I uh, spent a lot of time painting that, I don't want to ruin it. But here, one, two, three, and there's three more along there. I've got to get that off. Uh, once I can get that out, I can get to the fuel rail. So I'll carry on doing what I'm doing. I just wanted to show you that, um, what they call trumpet being loose. I wonder if that's the source of my, I've got a little rattle at the top of this new engine. I wonder if that's it. Anyway, we'll find out. I'll see them all again and uh, <laughs> we'll go from there. Oh, the joys of this engine. I love this car. God, I hate it. Anyway, I'll be back. Just another little quick tip. When you get to this stage and you've got the plenum off and the secondary sort of spacer, I don't know what the hell you call it, a um, bit of tape over the inlet. You really don't want anything falling down there. Um, I, I covered it with a rag and then thought, no, nah, that's just going to be in the way. So a bit of tape, box of holes, stops crap falling in it. Okay, I'll keep going. All right. Um, yep, yeah, I'm still here. So uh, next job is to the fuel rail, I've got to loosen it. So if you're not familiar, um, these little bolt here, looks like a 
10 mil, could be a nine, could be an eight, who knows, this thing, they're all different. I've got Imperial, Metric, yeah. They may and ain't got Whitworth on here, really. Anyway, um, just want to let you know, I've battled these bloody clips for years, right? These injector plugs. And I'm sick and tired of trying to get these wire clips off, so I thought, I'll just take a minute and go Google it. And oh, why didn't I do this years ago? Because they didn't have Google. Um, apparently the trick is, and I've just found out, if you just give them a bit of a side-to-side -side wiggle, they pop off. So I'm an idiot. But I learned something, as we always do. So there you go. Uh, so I'm going to pop the fuel rail. I'm going to take these clips. These little shiny clips there. Pull them out. Make sure you put them somewhere safe. I've got a little magnetic tray. I'm going to drop them in. There it is over there. So uh, yeah, pull all the clips. The fuel rail, there's a bolt, not there, bolt, another one there, another one there. And I think uh, there's one somewhere on this regulator. I'm going to try, <laughs> I'm going to try and do this because they say pull the regulator. Uh, I'm going to try not to. So what I'm thinking is get this rail and lift it. If I can, brilliant. If I can't, no, nah, well, I'll work it out when I get there. So I'll keep going and I'll show you in a minute what these injectors look like and how to pop one out. For the next trick, when I put this motor together, I did it on a nice engine stand. And even then, these injectors were a little tricky because you've got some going that way and some going that way, all attached by a solid rail. You've got two things facing that way and you're trying to lift them straight up, not gonna happen. Now I've got the coil pack off at the back. That is a nightmare pain in the bomb, trying to get to them bolts. So now I'm faced with a loose fuel rail. <sighs> so what do I do, folks? Answers in the comments. I'm sort of hoping that I can just lift it. Oh yeah, I see fuel coming out. All right, so I've got to get... See, this is what happens when you lift them with an iPhone and a ten dollar tripod. Where's it gone? Yeah, uh, that was interesting. I don't even know if that's the right way around. <laughs> You're probably getting seasick. I'm going to rescue my tripod. <laughs> oh, I knew this was going to be fun. This is where I'm at now. We have a fuel rail lifted up. Um, <laughs> a bunch of a bit of wire to hang it up there. It's sort of come out. It stinks like a petrol station at the moment, so definitely not time for a uh, smoko. But um, yeah, I've got a couple of couple of them stuck in the rail, and the rest are down in the pots there. So I'm going to oh, hopefully. Oh god, that's going to keep slipping. It's a bit tricky one-handed, but they're just O-rings. So here we have. This is very hard to see. In there is a single hole. These are the old style. They look a lot cleaner and better than they actually are because I painted them. Uh, they're the old style and there's a single hole. It's a bit of a, actually there you go, you just see it. It's a jet as a rather than a atomization thing. The new ones I've got, I will show you. I'll be back. That's the old one, single solid, um, pre-97, I uh, believe, for this engine is what they fitted these old style Lucas ones on. I have got, oh, no, I don't need that anyway. So these are from a guy in the US, thank you very much. Um, excellent service, I will try and put a description link for you. You see how they have four tiny, tiny holes. These are a Bosch reconditioned, uh, oops, that's the wrong way around. They're a reconditioned Bosch unit off a later Range Rover. Apparently some Mustang 5 litre V8 ones also fit, not looked into that. But you're meant to get better atomization, um, which logic sedates, you get a better bang for your buck. I uh, should get a bit more economy, a little bit more bottom end power. Um, 
It's what I'd really like on this thing. Uh, the economy, well, if you own one of these and you're worried about economy, you shouldn't own one of these. Uh, but I want just a little bit more bottom end punch and um, bar going the whole hog of uh, new cams and blah, blah, blah. This is a standard motor. This is a fire and forget kind of upgrade. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these in. They're exactly the same plug. So later model range drove on. Um, or Mustang 5 litre V8 of the same era, apparently. So I'll get the old ones out. Uh, you've just got to lube the O-rings. Um, it says you can use either fuel, petrol, gas, gasoline, um, or just straight new engine oil. So I'm just going to give them a bit of a smear with some engine oil. Just so that they slip in nicely. You can never have too much lubrication. Um, so I've been told. So I'll carry on and I'll get back to you when there's something more interesting to talk about. There's all eight old ones. Just a little quick tip. When you're pulling them out, I mean, I'm lucky. I rebuilt this engine and I um, cleaned everything and lubed it before these went in. So they came out of the inlet manifold very, very easily. However, the one when I took them out originally, they didn't. You have to make sure when you're taking them out, this o-ring comes with them so quite often and i had this with a couple of these the o-ring will stick to the wall of the inlet manifold and stay inside then you go and try and put the new one in if you're not aware that it's stuck in there and it just won't go and you're fighting it and anyway so what you need to make sure is the o-ring is also out of the inlet manifold hole where these stick in just so you know um just a little tip Make sure the O-rings are clear and the holes that the new injectors are going in are clean. All right, back to it. So I got seven in. Ooh. Uh, three there and four on there. Just thought I'd show you. So I put a little bit of a wipe of just new engine oil um, on those O-rings. And just so you can see, they literally... So if I can show you properly, you can hear, they just pop and that's it, they're in. So don't worry about spinning them around, anything like that. They just, they just pop in. The tricky bit is getting that square peg in them round holes, so to speak, uh, because they're all at an angle, they're all at a different angle. And as you've probably known, you can't lift something straight up that's angled. Um, putting them back on. Hmm. I'm not going to show you me fighting them because, uh, yeah. I'm just going to put them on. You can work that one out yourself. I'm going to work from the back and drop that fuel rail down, hopefully over them. You can twist and turn them a little bit while they're in there. So I'm hoping I can just get them all down, but I've only got one pair of hands and I can't get the tripod in here to show you what's going on. But it should be okay. He says, I'll be back. So this is attempt number two. I tried number first attempt by putting the injectors in the inlet manifold and then putting the rail on top of that. Uh, I don't know, I couldn't get the rail down onto the injectors far enough. Um, yes, I should have looked at the manual. God, I know, before you start chewing away. Anyway, um, so I'm just putting them in the rail first and I'm going to see if I can't work from the back down. So they're all in. I put the clips on as well so that they're at the designated height. Designated. Wow. And it's still AM. That's a good word. Um, so now I'm just going to try and, yeah, manipulate this all to get those eight in those eight holes and um, all the other little bolts and the holes and clips, get them all lined up and we'll go from there. But yeah, a little... Uh, Tip number two, don't put them in the inlet manifold first. Let's put them in the fuel rail first. Now, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'll let you know. Well, that was a complete faff. <sighs> yeah. Almost a foobar. If you don't know what foobar means, go look up an old um, helicopter movie. Can't remember what it's called. Blue Thunder or something. They talk about foobar. Anyway. Um, yeah, I got them in. Uh, the trick is to put them in the fuel rail first and then slide them in, <laughs> slide them in place, it says in the manual, yeah, right. But anyway, it was a trick. I don't, I just primed the fuel pump 
obviously I can't fire it up without all this manifold on the top, but um, there's no leaks that I can see. Uh, so yeah, now I just gotta put all this top bit back on, but before I do that, I am gonna tackle seating them so that they've got a bit of time to set and dry before I put it all back together. So I'm just gonna use some straight Loctite thread sealant on them. Get them all down and in place. I'll do them in, in my little tiny workshop and uh, then I'll put it all back together. Right, dudes and dudettes, she's all back together. And miraculously, no bolts left in my tray. So um, they either fell down the inlet or I got them all. Yeah, let's hope I got them all. Um, so now I've done an adaptive reset as well using the Nanocom um, computer just to reset all the fueling settings. Um, what I've read, when you fire these up with these new injectors, it can run a bit grumpy and rough. Um, I'm going to hit the key and we'll see. I'll see if I can reach. I probably can't. Uh, I don't know what you can see, but I'm going to try and anyway. <laughs> Goes away when it's warm. 